and welcome to today's show. And we have uh, invited with us uh, today Dr. Patrick Liu. Uh, he's the co-founder of Gex Ventures in Singapore and he has a globalized uh, business structure. I'll leave you uh, to Dr. Patrick to introduce himself. Sure. Uh, hi everybody, thank you for having me on this show and uh, it's a great honor and pleasure for me to share my small little two cents worth of wisdom and insights. Uh, I was very, very blessed. I grew up among the poorest of the poor, and because I grew up among the poorest of the poor, I was forced to be an entrepreneur investor since a very, very young age. And uh, I was very, very thankful because many angels came around me, beside me, behind me, supporting me. So I had a very, very good run. I uh, was literally promoted when I was an employee, and I ended up as the CEO of a multinational, multi-billion dollar company. I look after the Asia-Pacific region. And then I became an entrepreneur. And in my short little life the journey, I have listed more than three companies in my... I've helped to list more than three companies in my lifetime. Uh, first, first company in New York Stock Exchange, second company in Australia Security Exchange, and the third company in Singapore Exchange. Mm, wow, three companies, three exchanges, and a very lucrative and a very interesting career. Sure. Uh, I had a good time. Ah, Dr. Patrick, okay, here we're talking a little bit about how to win big in Asia. Sure. Can you tell me about uh, what you have noticed recently and what's changed? I think we all know the business world is going through a sea change. Because of globalization, the world has become more and more interconnected, more and more interdependent, which means that consumers are now more and more intertwined with one another. We are becoming more and more integrated together. We have become virtually like a network village. And because of this rise of the network village, we are going through at least three mega shifts in the way we run our business, in the way we market our products and services. And if it's okay with you, I'd like to share with you my three favorite mega shifts. Definitely. Okay. Uh, touch on it. The first thing is that uh, I think marketing should not be relegated, as in most cases, to a department, to a job, or to a function. The Charter Institute of Marketing uh, basically defined marketing as uh, being a, is the management process of anticipating, identifying, and satisfying customer needs profitably. But if you look at the definition of customers, we don't just have one category of customers. Now we have three different categories of customers. We have what we call the internal customers, your staff, then you have your external customers, and then we have what I call the stakeholder customers which really has to do with your industry, your market, your community, and society at large. And whether you like it or not, these stakeholders you know, will make a major impact you know, on your business. So you need to serve this three range of uh, customers. And so today, the job of marketing is the job of everybody in your organization. Let me give you a specific example. I think in marketing, we need to now go beyond the traditional profit making processes as well as uh, you know as well as the branding processes we need to create what i call a pro, a, a purpose driven organization when i said about when i talk about purpose driven organization you need to ask yourself this question why should anybody work for you why what what are the things that uh, your customers your market is looking for you to do why do they want you to exist why do they want you to achieve what do they want you to impact in your work? Because if you don't serve a higher purpose and fulfill a higher calling, you will never be able to attract customers in this network village. The second mega shift has to do with serving the needs of the customer. Today, we cannot say, I'm only interested in customer needs. Today, you really need to serve what I call the total needs of the customer. Because in a network village, you are more or less connected to your customers in a holistic, in a balance, and in many sense, work in a calibrated way. So you need to look after their personal needs, their professional needs, their team needs, their functional needs, as well as their organizational and business needs. You need to also understand not just their current needs, as well as their future needs. Mm -hmm. Why? Because today in the network village, you cannot see the customers as anything other than a human with loved ones who serve and work in the community. So you need to be connected to them in every sense of the word in a more intimate way. And a third mega shift has to do with the fact that we need to now provide what I call you know, on-demand services, next change services. What do I mean? What do I mean by next change services? 
A lot of customers today don't even know what their real needs are. They don't even know what is happening in the real world. So as marketeers, as entrepreneurs, our job is to be able to help the customers understand what their real needs are. Educate them on their real needs. I mean, if you look at all the top entrepreneurs in the world, whether it's Steve Jobs or Mark Zuckerberg, or whether it's Steve or Jeff Bezos, they don't sell their products and services. They, tell, they sell products and services that the customer don't even know exist. They don't even know they need. Of course, the famous story is Steve Jobs you know, decided to create product without any keypads. Now, how would a customer know they don't need a keypad? Proud to us now using most devices without keypad. So you need to understand that as, a, as an entrepreneur, as a marketeer, you need to now understand what their future needs, what the future requirements are because it's fast evolving and fast changing and be able to need not just today's needs, but tomorrow's needs. So and be able to need, uh, meet the needs of a future market That's right. that may not exist. Already. Yeah. So the two questions you have to ask themselves is this, what are tomorrow's problems that you need to start resolving from today? What are tomorrow's opportunities that you need to start capitalizing on from today? Wow, Dr. Patrick, I can't wait to get into a deeper conversation. But uh, before that, I know we're going to do a short roundup. Uh, what, can you share with me in, in, in a bit of a detail uh, any failures that actually has, uh, you've experienced has shaped the way you've uh, uh, led your life? Thank you for asking this question. I have to tell you this, I always lay claim to being the number one failure uh, in as far as my part of the world is concerned because the Singapore government you know, used to have an award called the Phoenix Award because they want to find an entrepreneur who has failed badly and thankfully you know, has risen from the ashes like a phoenix. And so my partner, who is a much better speaker than me, presented our life story. I wrote the story for him and, uh, and um, we actually won the Phoenix Award. So wow. I can actually tell you, we won the award for being the number one failure. I think that's very important because I always tell people, if you don't know how to fail successfully, you will never be able to succeed. Some of the best teachers are Professor Payne, Professor Sorrow, and Professor Failure. Okay. So one and of I think my many of us might already know them. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah, it's not a question of being trained by uh, Professor Failure. It's a question of whether you know you do something about it, you learn something from it, from it, and you leverage on your failure to achieve the next level of growth. So what happened? I'm going to tell you one of my failures, uh, one of my many failures uh, during the Asian crisis when the economy was, you know, taking a nose dive. You know, I was conned and because of this, I lost millions and 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 millions a lot of millions. A lot of millions. I need to borrow your two finger and and plus my 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 fingers plus your toes and my toes and that wouldn't even add up to the amount of money that I lost. But I'm always eternally grateful for the failure because Literally, when I was going through a pits of hell, I was divinely inspired to create a totally new business model. And we call this a love-based business model. And interestingly enough, uh, the National University of Singapore actually wrote a case study uh, about our love-based business model. And uh, we all know that love is the most powerful force in the workplace as well as in life. But we never put love back into our business model. We never incorporated love in as far as our business administration operation, we never, you know, put back love in as far as the way we serve our customers. And yet we all know that love is very, very important. So we created a love-based business model where we say we want to love ourselves, our customers, our colleagues, our communities, our country, and the many, many other countries out there, especially uh, victims who suffer through different natural crises. So because of this failure, you know, we were able to rise from the ashes. And because of this love-based business model between 2004 to 2009, we end up as being the fastest growing company in my industry, at least. And by 2010, we were ranked number one for productivity as measured by returns on equity as measured by the Singapore 1000 SME 500 studies. Wow, that's, that's amazing. Okay, and uh, do you see that, uh, has that brought you to even greater success? Um, because of uh, introducing love back in the business world, because of seeing business as just not a platform for creating profit, you know, and having more and more customers, we see businesses 
totally as a totally different uh, instrument of being able to catalyze changes for good as uh, business can be a great platform to be able to make the world a much better place to live in and i think if you have better entrepreneurs more and more and better entrepreneurs and investors together with uh, the government universities and and charity organization and all the other stakeholders i believe we can eradicate poverty in our lifetime well definitely these are stories that we need for asia because i think uh, asia also has the greatest population mm. and a lot of poverty in our countries sure but at the same time a lot of promise that's right, right? so if, if you can summarize in one word okay what's going to happen in Asia and what's going to be so important? What should our marketers and business owners listening in, what should they be looking at? I tell people that the economic pendulum is swinging back to Asia. Asia is going to be the fastest growing economic basin and arguably the largest economic basin in the fourth industrial revolution. So my one word to everybody is, is this, go for it. Three words, but go for it. Okay. Uh, I, I put a hex, a hex sign <laughs> and then go. F- no, 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 the, the, the social okay. media word, hex sign and go for it to tell people if you know there's opportunity, grab it. Okay. So it's not just do it because just do it means you do anything and everything that comes along. But go for it means if you know that Asia is going to be the fastest growing basin, please put asterisks with the word go for it because then all your people who are connected to you will be able to see the message and know this is the next go mine. Okay. With that, I'm going to end this segment, but I definitely uh, would love to hear a, l- a lot more about uh, what we have mentioned, the sure. three mega shares and go into detail and to see where the future is in Asia. And over here, at, uh, we're going to be talking to Dr. Patrick at the Asia Marketing Summit. So do watch out for it. But uh, We're signing off here and we'll see each other very soon. See you then. Thank you.